Another way to calculate delta H is using Hess's law. Hess's law is a way to calculate delta H by manipulating a series of steps that add up to give the balanced overall equation. So the idea behind Hess's law is when you manipulate an equation, you're going to change the delta H. Here we're given this first reaction, and it has a delta H of negative 164. The second reaction is very similar to that top one. If you notice, I have two N2Os and I have two N2Os. I have one oxygen as a product and one oxygen as a reactant. Two nitrogen as products, two nitrogens as reactants. So what they did was reverse the reaction. The products are now reactants and the reactants are now products. When you reverse the reaction, you reverse the delta H sign. And so this reaction has a delta H of 164 kilojoules. If we compare this top reaction with the third reaction, we can see that we had two N2Os, but now we have four N2Os. One oxygen, two oxygens. Two nitrogens, four oxygens. So what happened was we multiplied that top reaction by two. When you multiply a reaction, then you're going to multiply the delta H by that number. So we get two times negative 164 or negative 328 kilojoules. And finally, this top reaction and the last reaction, we can see that the N2O is on the product side now. But we had two, and now we only have one. Our oxygen, we had one, and now we have half of an oxygen. Nitrogen, we had two, now we have half. So we reversed the reaction. And we divided it by 2, which means our delta H's sign will get reversed. So it's going to be positive. And I'm going to divide it by 2 since I divided the reaction by 2, giving me a new delta H of 82 kilojoules. So for this reaction, we're calculating the delta H for this reaction here. So this one we do not know the delta H for. They give you multiple equations. In this case, we have two equations that have to add up to that overall equation. So what you're going to do is find the first item. We have sulfur. Find where sulfur is in these bottom reactions. These are the ones that you're going to manipulate. Sulfur is located here. If it's located in more than one spot, save it to the end. But in this case, I only have sulfur in the second reaction. I want it as a reactant. I have it as a reactant. I have one sulfur. I need one sulfur. So this sulfur is in the correct location. So that one is good. Next, I go to oxygen. Oxygen is located in the top reaction, but it's also located in the second reaction. If it's in more than one equation, leave it to the end because you don't know which ox or which equation you need to change. Finally, our sulfur dioxide is located in this top reaction. I want it as a product. It's currently a reactant. So that means I need to reverse the top reaction. When you reverse it, make sure you rewrite it so you do not get confused. And make sure that you write the new delta H. Because I reversed the reaction, my delta H's sign gets reversed. And cross out the original equation so you don't add three equations up at the end. So now I have my sulfur, di sulfur dioxide in the correct location. Everything else needs to cross out. Notice my oxygens, I have one and a half oxygens and half an oxygen. They're on opposite sides of the equation. One's a reactant and one's a product. So the smaller amount will go away completely. So one half gets crossed out, leaving me with just one oxygen. So now I have my balanced equation. Whatever I did not circle should be crossing out. I have SO3 as a reactant, SO3 as a product. 
Sometimes you'll have an equation that is given to you that you will not circle anything in. You just need to use it to cancel out the other substances. Finally, you just add up your delta H's. Adding these two up, you get negative 297 kilojoules. And that's the delta H of my given equation. All right, let's look at one more. Again, the delta H for this reaction is the one I'm trying to find. So that's the one you should be focused on, seeing what you need to do to these equations. CH4 is a reactant. I have CH4 here as a product. So first, it's not in the right location, so I'm going to have to flip the equation. I need one CH4, I have half a CH4, so I also need to multiply that equation by two to give me the correct number. So that's going to give me one CH4, two oxygens, one CO2, and two waters. Those waters are gases. I'm putting the gas there because if you look at the top equation, we have water liquid and water gas. So it's important to put your state symbols when you have compounds or elements that are in different phases. So my delta H, I reversed it and I multiplied it by two. So that's gonna reverse the sign and multiply it by two. So my CH4 is in the right location. My oxygen is in the right location and right number. My CO2 is in the right location and right number. But I want H2O liquid. I have H2O gas. H2O liquid is located in the first reaction, but it's not in the right location. I need it as a product, not as a reactant. Also, I need two H2O liquids, not one, so I'm going to have to flip this reaction and again multiply by two. So now my H2O gas cancel out, and I'm left with H2O liquid, which is the last piece that I needed. My delta H for this new reaction, I flipped it, and I multiplied by 2, so that's negative 88 kilojoules. So adding that up, you get negative 90 kilojoules. I'm going to pause the video and try this one on your own. Restart when you have the answer. All right, so what you should have done, we have H gas, we have H gas. It's in the wrong spot, so you should have multiplied by two. Or actually, you should have reversed it. Bromine is also in the wrong spot, but the correct number, so we just need to reverse it. And HBr is already in the right spot, so we don't have to do anything to it. I have my half hydrogen gas, half hydrogen gas as a product, half bromine as a reactant, half bromine as a product. So everything else cancels out, so I can add these up. Remember to add all three up. And so you should have gotten negative 366 kilojoules. This one is a little bit more difficult, so if you want to watch, you can watch it, or you can pause it and try this one on your own.
And if you get stuck, restart. So we're trying to find the delta H of this top reaction. At the O, I want it as a reactant. The only place I have FeO is in this bottom reaction. I want it as a reactant, it's a product. So I'm gonna to have to reverse that reaction. But I only want one FeO and I have three of them. So I'm going to have to divide that reaction by three. When I divide it by three, I get one third of CO2, one third of Fe3O4, and one third of CO. Remember that I reversed it and I divided by three. So I get negative 6.33. Also, make sure that you're keeping track of what you've already solved for. I've already solved for FeO, which means I can no longer do anything to this equation because if I change this equation again, then that's going to mess up my FeO that I've already solved for. So this one is good. Next, carbon monoxide. I want it as a reactant. I have it here as a reactant and here. So recall that we said that if it's in more than one spot, leave it to the end. So we're going to ignore the CO for now and move down to iron. Iron is a product and iron is only located in this second reaction. In the second reaction, it is a product, so that's good, but we have two when we only want one. So we're going to have to divide this second reaction by two. Notice that I put two-thirds CO, it should be three-halves CO. And so negative 25 divided by two. Make sure that you're being as neat as possible on these problems. And if you get completely stuck, then you may just want to restart since they're similar to puzzles. All right, our last one is carbon dioxide. We have carbon dioxide in the top reaction and this bottom reaction. So we have it in two spots there, and I also know that everything else is gonna have to cancel out. So if you get confused on what you need to do to a reaction, you can start looking at your other pieces. I know that I'm gonna to have to get this Fe3O4 to cancel out. I can't change this one because I've already circled something in the equation, but this one I can switch. So in order for them to cancel out, I'm gonna to have to reverse this top reaction. So I know I'm gonna to need to reverse it. And I'm gonna to have to multiply the equation by something to give me one third or 0.33. Well, two times one sixth gives me one third. But if you're not good with fractions and you don't know that, you can say two times something gives me one third or 0.33. So when you solve that, you'll get one sixth or 0.1667. So when I reverse that reaction, I need to reverse it and multiply it by one sixth or 0.1666. So two times 0.1667 gives me 1.333 or one third. And three times 0.1667 gives me one half or 0.5. And so my new delta H should be reversed and divided or multiplied by one sixth. And now we can cross out what we do not already have. One third and one sixth add up 
to give you 0.5. And that cancels out with this one, but if you look back, I had messed up when I wrote it. So if you were just copying down what I had, it was three, but we divided that by two. So that should have been three halves, not two thirds. So this one and this one add up to 0.5. And that 0.5 will cancel out with 0.5 of three halves, leaving me with one carbon monoxide. And one third and one sixth cancel out. Again, that's 0.5, which cancels that out to give me just one CO2. Adding that up, you get 11.0 kilojoules. This problem is way harder than probably most of the ones you'll see. Uh, but you should be familiar with fractions, and so that's why we went ahead and solved it. But this one had an extreme number of fractions compared to what you would have to see. If they're on the same side, like our two here, you add them up. If they're on opposite sides, then you cross them out. So you did see all the aspects of this one, but you would not see one of this level of difficulty on a test or quiz.